or use vengeful. So I need, I need a different word than vengeful. Spiteful. We'll go with spiteful. Hey all you spiteful bards and bardettes, welcome back to I Cast Vicious Mockery. A show about linguistics, about philosophy, and about how to get back at your ex. No, no, we haven't talked about that yet, and I, and I don't think we will. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Austin. And uh, I have to say, we both probably have a lot of experience in getting back at your ex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's definitely something we've both engaged in on many occasions. I have done it. I, I have done that. Yes. Really? Uh, yeah. Would you? How? how I've, I, I've been spiteful to an to an ex of mine before. Yeah. But not like getting back at them in mm-hmm. in a way that's like fine, uh, like final, but just being petty to them. I've been petty mm-hmm. to my ex mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was friends with my only ex throughout like the rest of our lives after that. And more power to you, man. Yeah. Uh, that's great. That's what happens when you date somebody when you're in preschool. Yeah. You can just um, be, be pals after that. Yeah, when you date people in high school, oh boy, uh, that's that's always rough. Yeah, pretty always much. rough. Always rough. Well, it didn't especially help. when <laughs> I was going to say like especially when you're so much older than them, but I that's not true. That didn't happen. That d- that definitely didn't happen. I mean, I wasn't so much older than them. No, you you have been like one grade older than a person who you've dated, I think, right? Maybe two, one grade? Two, two. Two, I think. To be fair, though, you've also been... Yeah. Have you... It doesn't matter. Same same, same thing other way. Uh, same thing other way? At least close. Uh, yeah. Yeah, older older than me. I've only I've only dated one person older than me. Uh, I guess yeah, they were just one grade ahead, huh? Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure that we're thinking about the same person. Oh, in that case, you've dated two people older than you. We just found that out. Uh, did I? Did I? Did I? One what? of one of them was when we were in grade school. Really? Mm-hmm. What? I think eighth grade, maybe seventh. When we were in eighth grade, I dated yeah. somebody in high school. No way. Oh, oh yeah, it must have been when we were in eighth grade. Oh, 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 oh. No, mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was, uh, it was freshman year of. Oh of really? High school. Oh, it was. Okay. It, it was. I, I didn't know. I even talked to you that year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? We didn't talk to each other freshman year of high school. I mean, yeah, we did, but yeah, not a lot. No, that's true. We didn't see each other very much. I guess. No, not not as much. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I forgot. Yes, I forgot about that person. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a freshman in high school, I dated someone who is a sophomore in high school. Yeah, dude. Wow. I know. Impressive. I I can't believe. Look it at either. those stats on this guy. I can't believe his, it either. His charisma's up at a fourteen at least. A four, a fourteen at least. <laughs> sure. Um. Yeah. So anyway, not on that subject. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's not talk about that. It's been a while. Everyone. It has. You know what? I have to welcome you to our new studio. Yeah, we we've got a new place. Yeah, it's a new studio just for this podcast. That's right. We went out and built an entire studio for a podcast that I listen to. Yeah. Um, Though, <laughs> no, I, I know that there are there are three other uh, people listening to this right now, and thank you for yes, that. Yes, thank you for listening to our podcast. Yeah, um, I, I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, that, that's all I can hope for. Yeah, for you. yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> God knows I don't listen to this show, so somebody has to. Yeah. You know. No, we we kind of so we moved, and we built uh, an office. Because my wife works from home. She doesn't work in the office. She wants to work on the couch. But uh, she, we, we did, she did one in an office. <laughs> yeah. When he says we, he means he and his wife. Me and I, my wife, I, Matt. Yeah, I, I uh, did not. I don't live here. No. Yeah, he does not live here. But I'm here right now. I'm, I'm he is here, here right now. So, it, sorry, he's not. I don't mean that he's unalive here now. 
or undead or whatever state of life. I could be though. Like, how do you really know? So if somebody is, all right. So the word unalive keeps happening on YouTube. I hear it all the time. Oh, not yeah. just from, not just from the same people, but from different people. Yep. If unalive works like undead, somebody who is undead used to be dead and then stopped being dead. Mm -hmm. I track you so far. Somebody who is unalive, though, mm -hmm. what's the difference between that and dead? Mm. I, I get that they are meant to be the same thing. I get that they're meant to be like, you know, like they put you in the same state, but... Right. Um, the, the term is for algorithm purposes. Right, it's for algorithm purposes. But but what is the difference between... How, how do you end up that way? Yeah. Like, like, if you were talking outside of the YouTube algorithm, how could somebody become unalive is this like a is this like a linear process you're mm -hmm. you're alive and then mm -hmm, you're dead mm -hmm. and then you're undead and then you're unalive is that how it works yeah <laughs> so if you yeah i guess so so each time you do it it, it adds another a, a must add like another. negation so so then if they're brought back again is that un undead Maybe no. this is all just prejudice. Un un undead. You know, like like why why is somebody undead worth any less than somebody alive? It's the economy, man. <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's the economy. It is the economy. It, you know, I mean, you just got to follow the money. You know. Yeah. The money has a mind of it, of its own. It it does what it does, and it does do and, what and, it does that, do. That just dictates our lives here in the United States of America. The United States of America, even it, it, is it technically alive? Is it is it undead? I don't know. I mean, corporations are like basically the ability to make a, a thought or an idea have the same rights as a person or well, not the same, but rights like a person has rights and abilities for like legally. Mm -hmm. I guess they're yeah, they're giving it. Yeah. Rights at all. Cause usually they wouldn't have any rights whatsoever. Yeah. Ideas don't have rights unless you call it a corporation. Right. Because a corporation isn't a building or a person or even like a document, it is literally just an idea. Isn't that wild to think about? I mean, there's like... Is it wild or is it untamed? <laughs> is it uncouth? I mean, some, some people would say yes. Some people would be like, ideas shouldn't have rights. Yeah, for sure. They're called libertarians. That's not what libertarians believe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what we call the people who believe that ideas shouldn't have rights, but I, I don't. What would a, what would a libertarian say about is, that? Is that what uh, uh, Detroit Become Human is about? <laughs> people who think that ideas shouldn't have rights. Is that what Morbius is about? Oh my god, it's such a good film, isn't it? Yeah. So profound. Yeah. Um, Jared Leto's, is that who it is? Jared Leto's acting is... Yeah, when he played Robin in that movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, he, wait, what? Yeah, Batman and Morbius. Remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The, yeah, you know? And Jack Nicholson Jack, came up Jack as... Jack Nicholas, yeah. Is, ...is the Joker and... F Phil Nicholson? <laughs> Jack Nicholas. Which one was it? Um, it... <laughs> It was Nick, Nicholas Jackson. Nicholas Jackson, right. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is but, Phil so, Jackson a person? Wait a minute, I think Phil Jackson's a person. Uh, well, Am I, mean, I wrong about that? Am I'm I right sure, about that? I'm sure Nick Jackson's a person too, I just don't know him. Guys, in, in the comments down below, I, I need you to do a little homework for me. Can you tell me who is Nick Jackson right now? Wait, what is... Just real quick before we go on in the episode, before we <laughs> progress any further... Okay, now that you've done that, let me ask a question. Okay. What Jack is a nickname, right? What is Jack a nickname for? Jonathan. Why why? There's already why do they have so many nicknames? John. Dude. 
dude. I I can't explain nicknames to you. Yeah, I know. I, I, my name is not even nicknameable. The last name Jackson exists though. Like, like you you like there's this guy named Jonathan, and you're like, I'm gonna call him Jack for some ungodly reason. You, you know what last name doesn't freaking exist though? Jonathan's son. Jonathan son. <laughs> what? How? Like, all right. So you you spend your entire life toiling in the dirt. Mm-hmm. You spend your your life breaking your back to make a name for yourself as Jonathan. And what do they call you when you have kids? What do they say to your kids? They say, oh, those kids of Jonathan's? That's Johnson. (laughs) It's Johnson. Let's call him Johnson. And then there are too many Johnsons running around. John's a popular name. They're like, we need a new nickname for this guy. Yeah. And that's why they started Johnson & Johnson to sell them. Right. And Johnson & Johnson came up with a product, Jack. I'm sorry. No, that was that was that was Jack Daniels. Oh right, yeah, Tennessee. So do you do you think that there was a real person named Jonathan Daniels? <sighs> yes, of course there was a real person named Jonathan Daniels. Like there absolutely there are probably many that exist right now named Jonathan Daniels. Oh, uh, and they're all gonna click subscribe right now. Thanks, Jonathan's. <laughs> We we respect that you are not Jax. We understand who you really are on the inside. Yeah, and I've, we'll we'll be glad to have you on this journey with us. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Um, that that always that always like um get gets gets me like like you ever you ever meet somebody who is like their name is like uh their name is like Philip or something and and you're like okay Phil and they're like no. Call me Philip. Like, they just refuse the nickname and like they don't like it. So yes, I have absolutely run into that. I, well, I know you have because we know we have a mutual acquaintance who has, does that. But anyway, we do. Yeah, I can't. And, and you know, for the life of me, I can't remember what his first name was. But it was it it, it was apparent of. Somebody we taught. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but for the most part, recently I've found that if I switch back and forth between the full name and nicknames just freely, mm-hmm. people like me better. Really? <laughs> yeah. Just, you just yeah, like for the most part. Rotate them? Yeah. Yeah. I just say whichever one happens to come out at that moment and they warm up to me seemingly faster. That's an interesting experiment. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. That's fascinating. That's a fascinating thought. I wonder why. Like, why would that be? I don't know. It, and, and it's kind of strange. Like, the people who I've known for a long time, like you, mm-hmm. I, I refer to you by one name and just that name. Yep. But, like, new people who I meet, I, I will be able to freely switch between their name and a nickname and it won't seem weird to them. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever tried to, to like nickname you, even though Austin doesn't have like a, like a nickname, the conventional nickname. No, I don't think so. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, yeah, nobody even uses my name normally. Really? Do do you think that they just don't remember it? (laughs) I don't know if they don't remember it or I, like, I, I think I give off an aura. I have, I have an aura. It's a special, it's a feat that I have, which makes mm. people, um, they have to, they have to roll against, I, I don't know, some, they have to roll like a charisma check to be able to use my name each, like each time. Fascinating. Yeah. Are you like a Sokka type or something? They call you ponytail guy. I've gotten some. I've gotten some name like that once, mm-hmm. and it it just doesn't. Nicknames just don't stick on me. I guess it just didn't stick like whatsoever. Yeah. I. You know. I'm inclined to agree. As somebody who's known you for quite a long time now. Yeah. 
You're not a nickname guy. I, which is so weird to me because like I, I'm fine with nicknaming other people and I'm fine with being called by a nickname. Sure. But it's never occurred to me once to ever call you by a nickname. No. Or my regular name very often, right? Like most people find like I, I find that when they talk to me or about me, they just avoid my name. I don't know that that's true. Mm. I use your name when I talk about you. Hmm. I use your name when I talk to you. Yeah. Um, your name. Whatever it is. I don't um, know. Ah, um, God, it's been so. That's actually one of my favorite. Like, this is an old one. Old <laughs> XKCD comic. <laughs> is, is the, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where he's like. Man, you, you ever <laughs> you ever you ever get that feeling like you've known somebody long enough you should know their name but you just can't remember and it cuts back and it's the priest and he's like, "Do you Rachel take?" He's like, "Oh yeah, Rachel." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love okay, that. Okay, so no joke, that may or may not have happened on my wedding day. Oh, really? May or may not have. Yes. Where you were like, what's her name? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, not with my wife, though. Oh, okay. No. Oh, oh gosh. Now I'm embarrassed. Woo. Huh. No, no. It definitely happened with other people there, though. Like, oh. I, I, like I walked over to them and I talked to them for a while at the reception. And you were just like, <laughs> and I was like the heck was her name? Hmm. And then somebody else, like, talked to them and I was like, oh, <gasps> God. <laughs> and, and now I'm not going to forget their name. So that's good, at least. Oh, I'm so guilty of it. I forget names instantly like mm -hmm. even even if i because we we got pretty good at remembering names th through teaching mm -hmm. uh, i would say mm -hmm. and uh, i guess just not doing it very much anymore i just like uh, i just don't feel like i want to be bothered with it but that's not very nice because i like to be social and that's a very like not social thing to do to just like yeah put no effort in remembering somebody's name yeah um, uh, and not only that, but then, then you have to ask them what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I see, I, I don't really have a problem with asking people what their name is, but I actually, um, do have a problem with asking anybody anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, and, and it's not that I, um, necessarily feel bad about doing that. It's that, that like, I want to figure it out on my own. It's like a challenge. You've it's like a little challenge. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. little challenge. So, so then I um, end up like challenging myself to figure out this person's name without asking them what it is. Yeah. I, well, okay. Yeah. I, I guess what well, what I do is the opposite. I'm the kid who like if I got stuck on a video game, I would look it up on the internet mm -hmm. without fail every time. I wouldn't even really try that hard or that much to figure it out on my own if I was stuck. Um, sometimes I would use like strategy guides and go through the game the first time I played it from the beginning. Interesting that you say that because yeah. I did the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. absolutely. Uh, okay. I strat like I actually, I collect strategy guides as part of my game collection mm -hmm. because they're like my favorite. I love strategy guides. Uh, Th they were cool. Yeah. There, there uh, was a specific era where they were like really good to have. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 And, and when they were made well and, and everything. But right. Like when I'm playing a video game now, I also look stuff up. Uh, it's it, so this is actually it, this is a sort of at least sort of documented thing. Mm -hmm. um, video games make people more willing to accept help. Real interesting. Mm, Very absolutely, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, this is uh, some of the stuff that Jane McGonigal, who is an author and researcher, uh, she talks about this in her work. Uh, so I'll ask you to look up the book Super Better if you want to read like a whole book on this. Or she has a TED Talk, I believe. Oh, which kind of sums talks. it up. Yeah, I, I like TED Talks a lot. Okay, cool. yeah, her, her TED Talk is pretty good. It, it's it's about her uh, recovery from concussion. Um, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, because uh, it turns out when you get a concussion, I'll I'll just kind of give you the short version of it. 
Um, a lot of people recover after the first week. And a lot of people recover after the first month. But guess what? Not everybody. Yeah. And the the symptoms of a concussion are like nausea and irritability and sensitivity to light. Like basic, basically everything that a migraine does. Mm-hmm. Um, and like also a lack of focus and stuff like that. Basically, imagine if your brain didn't work. And also it, you felt sick. <laughs> Easy to imagine. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So she went through, I, I think, like a year or more. She might even have some ongoing con- concussion symptoms. I don't know if she's totally symptom free. Wow. Like years later. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And she talks about how she used ideas from game design to like start the bulk of her recovery. Game. So game design. Okay. Game, yep. That's what, that's what she researches. That's a, that's, I, I like that subject too. Like casually, I don't do it <laughs> like seriously, but right. Yeah. Yeah. But casually I do like that subject. Yeah. Um, so she, she reach, researches kind of like the psychology of game design and she used some of this stuff on herself basically. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but after college, uh, I got rid of all of my notes mm-hmm. that I took throughout my entire like college career, except there's only one class's notes that I kept. To this day, I still have them. And it was my psychology of video games class. <laughs> it's OK. So listen, we have this podcast about tabletop games. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we'll get... We'll, hey, listen, we'll get to we, it, okay? We, yeah, we'll get there. Maybe we won't. I don't know how long we've been recording. I have no way to tell, actually. Uh, I've been keeping You've been... loose track, yeah. <laughs> 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 I've, there's a clock on this tablet I have, yeah. We're, we're good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's great, that's great. But um, I, I think that... The ideas behind game design, no, number one, um, they're they're really rich and cool and interesting. But number two, they are so much more important than games. Game design? Yeah, I is, think game design is so much more important than games. You can learn a lot from it right. about more than just games. Game design is figuring out, in, in the same way that like speed running or glitch hunting are finding out the rules of a video game and how you can use them. Game design is figuring out the rules of the human brain and how you can use it. Right, because the reason that games are such a huge industry is because they're literally designed to be something that people want to do, Mm -hmm. you know, in one way or another. Yeah, and Uh, imagine, imagine if you could get yourself to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. Imagine that. That would be amazing. That would be. If I did all the things that I wanted to do every day. Like, I'm not saying, oh, if I had an ideal perfect life and I just could do whatever I want. I mean, like, literally, if I had the exact same life, but I came home from work and I did the things that I wanted to do every day. I I can only. (laughs) Unfortunately, I can only imagine how how much. Uh cool stuff I would make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your life would be... how much more time I would spend with my friends and just generally uh, how much... I I don't don't know if happier is the right word because I don't know if I can be happier than I am. Um, But maybe more fulfilled is the right word? I don't know. Yeah, those those, those are not necessarily, you know... There, there has related, to be yeah. some word for when a human is reaching their potential. You know, like there has to be a word yeah. for how that feels. Yeah. Th- uh, yeah. Maybe not in the English language, but I'm sure yeah. in some language. There we'll is. come up with one. Well, well, yeah. Uh, blarf. There we go. I love I'm going to be so blarf. Yeah, there we go. We, I did it right there. Blarf. Th- that, that is the adjective form, right? Uh... Yeah. 
Okay. But uh, but also the verb? Wait, wait. To blarf. To be blarf. I guess that would be the nominal form. Because. Well, you would just say. Well, I guess it would be fast. Be. Okay. Be. Mm, okay. Yeah. You're not going to be blarf. You just are blarf. We'll conjugate blarf later. <laughs> we'll come back to you with that. I did that on purpose in order to make this a philosophical and linguistics podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Our weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> it gets us every time. Every time. No. Do um, you have any good D and D on that tablet? Uh, sure. Well. Uh, well. Uh, maybe. Um, I'm in slim hey, pickings. Bad D and D right now. Sure. Um, hey, I've got just like a bunch of spell. We've done this plenty of times, but I've got a just bunch, a of, bunch spells, of spells. Bunch of spells. Uh, one of each level from cantrip to nine, so ten. Ten spells here. Uh, by user uh, Game Boy 350. 350? Oh, man, I like me some Game Boy 350. Yeah, it's probably that gosh dang Loch Ness monster. <laughs> um, they're, ele- they're, po- they're poison-related spells. Did we do this one already? We might have. We yeah, did we did. One. We did this one already. Yeah, we did this one. We did this one already. We did this one. Okay, sorry. We didn't do this one, though. So we so hey if you guys remember the point, um, this is a monster. Uh, this is like a boss level monster. This guy, and he has something. This thing struck me just because like you see all the text here. Yeah, it's it's just it's a lot. There's a lot going on here, but when I started reading this, I, I just thought it was like comical in some way like i didn't figure this out ahead of time so maybe we can figure this out live there's two things about this monster it's it's a it's a big it's a big boy huge oh wait, wait. Does, can you can you tell us what it is called and who it is by maybe oh oh sorry 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 i don't know how to say this it's apparently a korean that looks korean yeah a korean folklore uh, uh something called a jihaguk Daijok. Maybe I'm, maybe that's close. Anyway, Korean pronunciation from what I've heard of it, mm-hmm. it's pretty loosey goosey. Okay, you probably said it exactly right. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, it's by user Nine Heavens Press here on Reddit. Um, so anyway, it's just loosely based off of off of some. Uh, Korean like deity or something or, mm-hmm. or just folklore creature but uh, regardless that that's not why I thought this was interesting if I'm being honest why I thought this was interesting is as I was skimming it I saw that first of all it has 275 hit points this is important actually um, and it has this feature it has a bunch of features but it has this feature where it starts with nine heads notice how I said it starts with nine heads yep okay and if you do more than 30 points of damage to it in a round, which the challenge rating is 17. So if you have a party of level 17s, yeah, you're probably going to do at least that much on average each round, right? Um, then it loses a head. Mm-hmm. If it loses all nine heads, it dies. Okay, so you're following so far. Uh, but... At the end of its turn, if it lost a head, it grows two more. Ah, okay. But here's the thing. Now, I think the implication here is that every time you do 30 damage, it loses a head. Mm -hmm. As long as it's in the same round. So, like, if you do 90 damage to it before its turn, it would lose three heads. Right? Right. Yep. But then at the end of its turn, it would get back six. Right. So the the rest of so the rest of this, the rest of the, all of this, it, because it's not like, OK, uh, the what the Hydra, if it loses a head, it goes two more. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that works mechanically. That works mechanically as well as like uh, uh, like like a flavor thing because it gets an attack per head when when it attacks right. But the thing that's funny to me about this is that it doesn't actually matter how many heads it has. 
Oh, <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Like having more heads doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as as far as I can tell by reading it, it just has more. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I guess you know. But it's also funny because let's do, can we do some math here real quick? Yeah. How so, many heads does it end up with? Right. Right. So if it has two hundred seventy five hit points, mm-hmm. and let's say you do the minimum exactly 30 damage every yeah. round to it. How many heads could it end up with? Two to the eighth. Two to the eighth. Yeah. Wow. A- am I right about I think I'm right about that, which is, um, what is that? Two to the first is two. <laughs> two. <laughs> it, we're mathing live here, 256. folks. 256. <laughs> Heads. <laughs> Wait, hold on. And that's when it has five hit points left. Uh, <laughs> wait, I'm just realizing something else, actually. Yeah. Um, it actually doesn't matter as long as you do some, like, exact factor of 30 every round, it the result would be the same. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have to do 30 each round. You no, could do- you, could, you could just do... Like exactly 90 no, each round or something. Well, because it can't lose more heads than it has. So if you did 270 damage in the first round, I think on its turn it would just have oh, two heads. Oh, well, sure. The, well, okay, so where's the point where nine heads? So I guess nine to, Yeah, oh, yeah, 270 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the first round, it, if you do 30 damage, then the next one you can do 60, and then you can do 90, and then you can do 120, it would be dead. Well, remember, it has nine heads to start with. Oh, it has nine to start with? Y- yes. Oh. I did say that. I didn't. I didn't. I would never <laughs> listen to anything that you've said. Maybe I didn't say that. I might not have said that. No, I, I, don't, I assumed it was one. No, it has nine. That, that, it, it has nine heads to start with. Uh, so unless. Well, that's the. OK, but that's. So the if you other. do all the damage in one turn, it's only going to end up with 18 heads. Like you can do 270 damage exactly and it will have 18 heads. But if you cut off each head like one at a time, it will end up with, I guess, 263 heads. 263 heads. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. OK, so if I didn't mention that, then I probably also didn't mention. Oh, wait, wait. But you know what? I did something dumb with my math. Okay. You can only cut off one head for each 30 damage. Yes. So it's only going to end up at any time ever with 18 heads because Be- they don't all come off i was for whatever reason oh, when i did yeah. two to the eighth i was thinking that, that you could cut off all the heads every 30 damage oh no 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 but it's not true <laughs> no you're 100 percent false one okay i spread lies about this creature just now you're right though you're right so yeah eight, I'm right 18, 18 heads is what it'll end up with yeah like for sure because Okay, because here's the other thing that mm-hmm. that they for some reason included in this, and again, it's funny because it has no mechanical value whatsoever. It says it starts with nine heads, and if it loses all of its heads, it dies. So, but so if you did two hundred seventy <laughs> points of damage on the first turn, and it had five hit points left, it dies. <laughs> Well, that's what's funny about it. Yeah. Because why even include that? <laughs> like, right. Why Unless, does it have some kind of abilities that give it, like, some... Like, it can gain more hit points than it started with or something? Okay, well... No, I... Well, yes. Yeah, no. Not really. Okay, this is... Because this is what it says. So, um... <laughs> So they don't grow head but head, heads back. <laughs> they don't grow <laughs> they head don't, butts. They don't grow head butts. They don't grow their heads back right. if they took fire damage, similar to how a troll's healing works. So if some of the damage that they took that round was fire damage, they mm-hmm. do not grow a new head. Still doesn't matter because I guess that's pretty realistic. <laughs> but it still doesn't matter because Be- yeah. it's negligible. Like right. it, it, like we're talking about five hit points difference here. Right. Um, but also, 
uh, they re <laughs> they regain ten hit points for every every time they regrow a head. So actually, the number of heads that they could regrow has has increased. Because now they get back 10 hit points every time they regrow a head. Right. And they regrow two heads at a time, right? Well, they regrow a head for every 30 points of damage that they take because they lose a head for every 30 points of damage. Wait they a take. minute. They don't. I was thinking now on the second. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so they just get back up to nine heads. Exactly. They don't even get more heads. Oh. Oh wait 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 wait, 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 okay, wait, 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 okay. Wait. No, they grow two heads for each head that that dies and ten hit points. So if you cut off a head mm -hmm. at the end of the creature's next turn, it'll grow two heads in that head's place. And what, is it ten hit points per head or ten hit points total? Uh, they regain ten hit points for each head regrown. So they lose two thirds of those hit points, or, or they might lose, depending on because is it? It's if they take that much damage per round. So it kind of sounds like they lose the head at the start of their turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, okay. No, I guess so, they would lose it when they took the damage, right? Yes. <laughs> but they does that. Like this is just a, a D and D rules thing that I like. I don't understand where this cuts off. Uh -huh. Like, can they lose more than one head per round? Yes. Are you sure? I think the way this is phrased, yes. Like, if I did sixty damage to them, do I take off two heads? Uh, yeah. Because if it says if they do more than thirty damage in a round, or if you do at least thirty damage in a round, they lose a head. I'm sorry, that's not what it says. I misread this. Ah, okay. it says if they take 30 or more damage in one turn. Ah, OK. So actually, one player has to do. So the funniest part about this to me now is that doing 29 damage exactly is the best. Like 29, 59, 89. Those are like the best numbers to get for this thing. Mm hmm. Because otherwise, it'll get two thirds of the hit points back. Right. So basically, <laughs> how good are you at dividing stuff by thirty? That that determines how good you are at fighting this thing. Right, and it's all like a roll of the dice. How how funny though? Like you want to do maximum damage, but you also don't want to like accidentally cut off a head because that will then actually make it harder on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I have to rescind some of this because regrowing heads mechanically still doesn't do anything, but now the hit point regaining part makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that it does have um, the option to roll for hit points. Yeah. Oh, it always does. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause creature hit points are based on a formula too. Yeah, but for this one, it's so important to get the yeah. hit points for all nine heads. Yeah, plus an extra five for the mm -hmm. fingertips or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, though, we totally misunderstood this thing. And we didn't even uh, give it a chance. But at the same time, it is a, it's a little weird. It's, it's, it's just a little weird. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not even making fun of it. And I'm not making fun of Nine Heavens Press, uh, but I do think it's funny. It, I, I feel like it's trying to do a thing uh -huh. that the D&D &D rules don't have very well-established language for, maybe. Maybe. That, that might be what's going on here. Maybe. It also has some, like, other weird... Like, okay, maybe if I looked up the lore of, like, what this creature is in, like, mm -hmm. Korean folklore... Yeah. This would definitely make more sense. And and people who know... The people listening to this, all the people who know the Korean folklore that are listening to this, I, you know, I, I know there's at least two-thirds of our audience who, mm -hmm. who does know what this is. Yep. And we, we know that because we know that they ring that notifications. <laughs> yes. Just for this particular creature that we're talking about... They'll be like, yeah, of course it has nine heads. Of course, if you chop off a head, two come back and it heals. 
Duh. Of course that um, when it uh, is poisoned, it gets drunk and um, uh, it gets stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it uh, uh, can um, curse th uh, things and give them vulnerability to certain types of damage. Uh, of course, it has advantage on attacks against clerics and paladins. <laughs> wow. I mean, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that a lot. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't say just clerics or paladins. It says any creature that can cast a cleric or paladin spell. Wow. That, so that's a really unique mechanic. Okay. The way that they said it there, that's a lot better to me. Yeah. I, I don't like the idea that certain things work better on classes because those are a game mechanic. Mm -hmm. like, like calling somebody, in fact, calling somebody a cleric in universe that to me i'm like mm -mm, i don't i don't like it i don't like it what would they rather you'd rather them be like all right maybe hold, they're a priest hold, maybe they are hold, hold. Um, a brother or n sister as in nun or monk i guess i guess but they could be a monk, different thing monk is different yeah uh but they could just both be called monk you could be a priest and be the monk class. You could you could be a priest and be a barbarian class. Like like a, I, I don't like it when the mechanics of the game seep into the in world, like in universe. Like, actually, a, a cleric speech, a cleric monk, uh, like multi class would be pretty cool. Actually, L like lore wise, I think mm -hmm. that'd be that'd be pretty cool because. Uh, clerics are also sort somewhat martial in, in their mm -hmm. build. So that's kind of, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, a clunk. I, I think, I think we made it. Yeah. I think we did it. Okay. I'm all, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some spoilers. Like, Hey, wait a minute. This isn't. Yeah. I made this up when I was in grade school. You made you made this up. Yeah. Okay. For the those listening to the show, not to alienate you. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is just a thing. Uh, this wasn't even for the show. This was. I, I, I but I I saw this over Anna's shoulder recently. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Um, so uh, this is just something that was posted on r slash cool guides mm -hmm. by Curious Hustler four twenty. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't the first to post it, but uh, it's it's this root. It's a runic. It's a runic way of writing numbers where every number is just one symbol from one one through. Well, I guess it's actually not very different from how we actually write numbers. Well, now, look at the bottom, and you'll see what the difference is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you so it, yes, all all numbers are basically just one symbol. Mm -hmm. um, and runes. Apparently, it's a sister Cistercian, Cistercian mm -hmm. thing in the 13th century. Um, so you can go uh, any number from one to 99, 9, uh, used for one symbol. Uh, d uh, look at the graph. Look at the, the graphic. Whoa. Hey. I'm not making. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. It's throw out screen. Whoa! Uh, if you if you send that to me, I I will do that. Um. um yeah. I'm, yeah. I'll send. I'm gonna send it all to you. Yeah. But okay. Uh, I don't even know. How, do you want to? I mean, what can even be said about it? So, you just look so at the, it. It's cool. Here, so here's the deal. Mm -hmm. When I was in grade school, through the Scholastic Book Club. I got the spy club books. I was okay. going to be a spy. Yep. Um, I actually think that those had a lot of influence in my life in, in like a lot oh. of ways. Oh, yeah. The spy gadgets from Scholastic Book. Well, not Fair? the gadgets. No, the books. I didn't use the gadgets that much, but the books I read a lot. And I learned a lot of cool stuff. The gadgets were 
semi-useful. Um, but anyway... Whoa. <laughs> I don't think they'll hear that. No, they probably won't. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, so the, the books, like I, I learned about codes and stuff. And mm-hmm. I think in f- fifth grade, I started developing my own writing systems in the when I should have been doing I don't know what else because I didn't take notes in grade school because I just remembered everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started taking notes later, but then I realized that I should just be remembering stuff again. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I, w- I started inventing my own writing systems to be more efficient, like space wise, <laughs> and also to be harder for other people to read. Okay. Um, like a spy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I came up with numbering systems exactly like this, where you could combine several different numbers in one spot to make a multi digit number. I also came up with. Um, like phon- phonetic type alphabets, like the Korean alphabet, sort of, but like a modular version of that for English, which I then found out is kind of similar to like Elvish and Lord of the Rings or things like that, where, where whole syllables in Elvish, it's a little different, but whole syllables are one character. Um, I started coming up with a bunch of those starting in fifth grade. It's, it's like, I mean, you, but basically what I'm saying is you need your kids to be a spy. Austin's kind of like an influencer. Yeah. There were a lot of things that Austin did that I did because Austin <laughs> did it. There, it was, there's a lot of stuff like that when we were young. Mm. Like you, you memorized the uh, Greek alphabet. And then I was like, I should memorize the Greek alphabet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't know it anymore. I, I can't um, I can't say the Greek alphabet, but I can read it still. I, I can't, but I did it in the mo in the time because because you did. I can read it very slowly. By the way, we're not we're not yeah. demoing this live or anything. But honestly, this is pretty. This is pretty clever. Yeah, if it's that's, cool. If that's what you, it's cool, yeah, because it, and it's really simple when you look at it because mm-hmm. all it is is just nine different. It's a vertical line, and then there are just nine different additions starting with the ones place in the top right, mm-hmm. the tens place in the top left, the hundreds place in the bottom right, and the thousands place in the bottom left, and and it's the same. So like one ten, one hundred, and a thousand are all the same line yep it just depends where you put it right on the on the vertical line um that makes a lot of sense yep and you sort of like read it well i guess you read it like right to left top to bottom which maybe it would make more sense to read it in a circle (laughs) yeah i think i would go in a circle yeah i would probably well, I don't know. Maybe there's well, a reason they did it. You know that what? Way. No, for for me personally, when I did stuff like this, it was almost always. I guess it would depend on what other influences I was going based off of, but it was usually, yeah, like top left corner, and then go down from there. Top, top left, and so then it's go not down. the same as this yeah. one. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it is an interesting order though for it to go in. Top, top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you would think it would go in like a circle, like anti-clockwise or something. I wonder if there's a reason for because, like, I, I think a lot of. I mean, this might have just been they they didn't know what they were doing. Like honestly, they they might not. Like I, I don't. This certainly doesn't look like it developed out of necessity, but more just out of like like curiosity and and you know the desire to create something, but not because they needed to be more efficient with their space. Mm, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. Because then I think the the like way that you read it and and stuff like that that would have a much more profound effect on how you like how it's laid out i don't know that's i don't know i guess i guess actually the way that you read it now that i'm looking at it is bottom left to right 
bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right. I guess technically. Yeah. Now that I'm now that I'm reading the examples on the bottom. Yeah, in that case though, I guess I would put the thousands digit in the top left and then hundreds in the top right and then tens in the bottom left and then ones in the bottom right. But I wonder if Again, I, I don't know if it was reasoned out, like where things should go, like uh, like the way that they wrote. Does that affect it? Like, is it easier to do the top right? And that's why the majority of the writing is going to be up there. That That's where you're going to do the most different digits. The the first digits in, in numbers, if you're writing a series of numbers, those digits are usually going to be more similar than the last digits. You're going to get a more even spread among the last last digit. So maybe maybe it's easier to write it in the top right. Or or because of the way that they wrote, like, I don't know what they were doing, if they were dipping a pen in ink or what they were doing. Um, yeah. But maybe it's maybe, maybe it like smears less if they if write it up there. Write it that way. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm looking at it like, is there is there something about not lifting the the pen too much? But no, there's a lot of lifting that would be required mm -hmm. for most of these. Yeah, and, and I wonder too if it's meant to be all taken in as one thing. Like, like do, would you write the line in the middle and then, you know, the little branches off of it? Or you can see in some of the examples that they give, like... Mm. Uh, they have 6,859. There are lines in it that are joined from the left side of the main line to the right side. And I wonder if you would draw those as one big line or if you would do the little left side first and the right side second and they just happen to touch. Yeah, is there like a like a stroke order you're saying and like continuous lines that connect? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would require complete understanding. You'd have to be able to know exactly what it looks like before you did it. Mm -hmm. Like if I was yeah, which gonna, is that's what I'm wondering. Do right, they do right. they see this as a complete? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, singular character that you can right. you imagine the whole thing first, yeah. or do you just write out the parts one at one at a time? I mean, I I guess it's a gradient. Probably when you start, it's one section at a time. I mean, I'm just thinking about like this isn't really that hard to learn. You could mm -hmm. learn this in an afternoon. Um, but the first couple of times you do it, you would have to be like, uh, uh, this section and then this section and then this section and then this section. But I think eventually you would just, you would just maybe even do it like, like how we write everything else, top to bottom, left to right. You just, you know, kind of draw it like you would draw anything. Mm hmm. Hmm. Do you guys like that dead so is that air technically <laughs> is that does that is that linguistics or math like which one is that uh, it's both uh, it's not linguistics because isn't linguistics about how you say words or is it just about words yeah what's the study of um alphabets yeah I guess it's more like what's that, that called is it an alpha I mean it's a writing it's system. not an alphabet yeah what's the study of writing systems let like not uh, it's not Lexemes? No, that's um, that's actually logical units. Uh, we're talking about graphemes. 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 Graph yeah. Uh, study <laughs> of insects. What? What is, what is Alpha, it? Like Al alphabets? Like uh, of writing, writing systems? systems? Study of writing systems. It comes up as a thing. Gram grammatology is what it's saying. The study of writing systems is grammatology. Hmm. I don't know if that's exactly what we're talking about, though. Typology? Isn't grammatology like where you, where you look like and you see if you're you had a lion in your star or something? <laughs> like what if there was a lion on the stars? then you have a certain personality oh. and you're magnetic maybe, or you have <laughs> you're magnetic. Yeah. Or like you have a different colored nose hair from the rest of your hair or stuff like that. Isn't that grammatology? 
No, grammatology is the study of how to uh, bake the best cookies. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, uh, now that I've done that to you, let's... Uh, okay, I have a. I have um. I want to run something by you. Yeah. Because you might have some ideas about this. So on Thursday, we're going to be play testing some stuff that that I want to play test. Mm-hmm. That is D and D related. So we're back to D and D. Thanks for jo- joining us on this D and D and D podcast. Uh, so, I, I, I wait. I shouldn't joke about that. These, the, yeah. these guys aren't around me all the time. That's um, true. That's true. So they might not realize that I, I like. Our D and D podcast is definitely something I look forward to. Oh yeah, yeah. I especially I, including and especially the D and D parts. I'm like super happy about it. Uh, so when I joke like that, it is just a joke. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> we just like to. We, we I have to. I have it. to act like this isn't super fun. Uh, yeah, or else, or else it, you'll think just, I like it, it, Baka. It'll just take over. <laughs> Baka. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so okay, so let me run this by you. Yeah, uh, I mentioned it before. I'm talking about a rock paper scissors system, right? Um, just a, a system where there there's a cyclical uh, adv- advantage, right? Um, and or disadvantage, but not not strictly in the D and D term advantage and disadvantage, and that's what I want to talk about. What are some other other than advantage and disadvantage as as they are, where you roll two d twenty and take the higher or lower respectively? What are some other ways that you could advantage a player uh, in in their specifically in combat Mm -hmm. there are a couple that i've come up with and i'm interested to hear what you think of them and if you have any others um and and these wildly vary in how good and how helpful or unhelpful they are uh they also vary in complexity so uh for disadvantage i thought okay what's like disadvantage but not as bad and the first thing that I came up with is like a slightly less bad disadvantage would be you roll 2d20 and you take the average. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is That actually might be that actually might be better than straight rolling. Yeah. You think so? I mean, on average it's going to be the same as straight rolling. Yeah, on average it'll be the right? same. Yeah. Is the is the average of two rolls is the expected value of that also just the average of all rolls? Well, in 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 the rules you always uh round down unless stated otherwise. Mm-hmm. So I think that might affect it a bit and yeah. I think it would make it slightly worse. I guess it would. In, in yeah, it would bring it down by by half a point like like I think the average damage roll or the yeah, the average roll is 10.5 or is it 11? 10.5. Yeah, 10.5 is the average roll. Yes. This would bring it down to a 10. Right. Which means that if you're rolling against an 11, you'd fail 50% of the time. Right. But it also, so it's still disadvantageous because in order to get a natural 20, you'd have to roll two 20s. But in order to get a natural one, you could roll two ones or a one and a two. Right. So. Uh, it still isn't good, Mm -hmm. but mostly what it does is it, it literally will bring the roles. It'll steepen the, the, the peak of averages Mm -hmm. where it'll make your roles more likely to be average. And that's the only thing I don't (laughs) ever want to (laughs) be. Right. This is already the worst punishment. It it like mitigates the extremes, right? Um, in, Mm -hmm. in some way. So, so it's like definitively not like a good thing. Like you don't want to have it imposed on you. But I did think that that was sort of an interesting 
an interesting thing to do to impose Mm -hmm. whatever you would call it. I don't know. Um, inconvenience. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, so you could also get a similar effect by rolling a D 100 and dividing by five. I don't like the idea of dividing by five as a mechanical thing in D and D. Right. Um, mostly because I, I, I want to try to eliminate math from it whenever I can. Okay. That's, that's what I was going to say. That's the one thing I really don't like about it is mm-hmm. I feel like it's too much math. Yeah. Taking an average is, yeah, it, it is exactly that. It, it is too much math. It's easy if you rolled like a five and a 10 and you get a seven, seven. Yeah. Uh, because of the rounding. Um, but it's hard if you roll a uh, two and a 17 and you're like, all right, well, which number is this? It's going to be one of Although you can just add them up and divide by two, which isn't that hard. I uh, guess that's, that's the same as having. That's what I default to. <laughs> that's what I always well, do. Well, so that, that is our, that's already in the game, though, too. Well, exactly. Right. Like because, that's already an allowed thing to happen. Right. Because you could. Because of resistance. Be resistant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So really, but but it would be happening, I think, more often than resistance happens. Yeah, which, yeah, I, I'm not so sure about that. I think it's a good idea, though. Um, it, it's kind of, yeah, it, it is interesting to to know that, like, to know, to know that you can't, like, you're, you're the, those roles where you, you know that you need a big number. Yeah. To, to know that like there's just not really even a chance but you'll you'll do okay but like you can't really do you can't pull out something crazy probably you right right exactly um so but, but, but i guess that's not that different from disadvantage but that, so, that feeling at least um, we are going to play test that mm-hmm. i want to play test three sets of um Including advantage and disadvantage. We're going to do that. Like the normal D&D rules, advantage, disadvantage. The By the way, part of the reason why I don't like that is because it exists so much in the game already. There are so many things that can give you advantage or disadvantage that I feel like I need something separate. Because if I'm going to add this mechanic in, it's going to be happening all the time. Yeah, and it, it would have to be... You, it's actually, it's really, um, like messing with advantage and disadvantage, uh, could go wrong really easily. Exactly. Like, it, you know, it just, I don't know, it just some, some, we'll, tr- I'm going to try it with play testing to see like if it's, if it's rock versus, versus scissors, rock will have advantage. If it's scissors versus rock, scissors will have disadvantage. We're going to try that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, and I, but I don't know. I have a few ideas of what the other things could be, but I don't know how to pair them up. Not that it really matters, but I'm, I'm not sure how to pair them up that, that would make the most sense. So one is averages. Another one that I thought of is not about the dice at all, or not about the actual attack roll, but the damage. Um, so what I was thinking is if you are, if, if you're rock versus scissors um, and you hit on your attack, um, you cannot roll below average on your damage dice. So if you're mm-hmm. rolling a D eight, if you get any number that's less than four, it counts as a four. Right. And everything else that's higher than a four is, is that number. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen that one used somewhere before. Yeah. There, there's some, or at least similar things to that where, where like you can't roll cool. below a certain number. Yeah. Right. You can't roll. Below. A lot of the time it has to like bards to have that with certain skill checks. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's a D 20 roll, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I, I think that that's like really, really, really strong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because well, the, the even stronger variant of it that I've seen is if it's less than this roll again, Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's really strong. Well, that, that takes your yeah. app. Like, if you do, if you do it the the first way that you mentioned, where if it's less than four, it's four. Mm-hmm. Your average moves closer to the four. Your average is then like a five point five or something, maybe five. Um, 
just like off the top of my head. If you right. if you instead re-roll, then your average is six and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I see what you're saying. Mostly the reason I came up with that rather than re-rolling was because like because the, 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 the first thing I thought of was re-roll once on your damage dice. Mm-hmm. But then I thought that's not good enough <laughs> or, or not that it's right. not good enough, but it doesn't seem like eno- as much of an advantage. And like if you re-roll your one and you get a two like on a D12, like that doesn't really feel any better. No, Re- <laughs> getting rid of a one does feel good. I that yeah. that is that's definitely true. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't feel that much better to only get a two. Right. Uh, it, it would really suck to to roll three d twelve, and go from three to six. Total. Right. Like that. That would be awful. But if you roll three d twelve and you know in this particular situation you're going to get at least a uh uh what a 18 Mm -hmm. that's great (laughs) like that feels really good like the worst you can do is an 18 nice yeah yeah seriously but but it still is fun to roll the dice it makes it always exciting to roll the damage dice Mm -hmm. because you know your minimum is going to be really good and there's the potential that you'll do better than that Mm -hmm. so i really like that idea but we'll see how it how it goes mechanically yeah i mean i guess what you could do too is you could say this does this much damage or you can take a minimum amount of damage and you just pick one or the other that's that's another option i think that actually almost is worse though that's actually kind of worse that feels bad doesn't it what so so let's say that you can your 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 spell Mm -hmm. is um you get it's 10d10 damage or oh boy okay yeah it's a high level spell or you can just do 55 damage oh like you pick one you you pick one after you roll after you roll but then if you pick the 55 it feels like you failed that roll basically yeah like that actually kind of sucks yeah it's like not fun right yeah so i think the way of framing it as and then 55 damage is still pretty good. So it takes this thing that actually would have been fun. <laughs> yeah. Like doing 55 damage would have been like pretty sweet and like kind of cool. And then it makes it a stinky consolation prize. Right, right. Um, okay, so uh, I agree with that. Um, and my only my only thought is... So obviously the rock, paper, scissors thing has to go both ways. Well, it doesn't have to, but I think it should. Where like not only if you're like if you're rock versus scissors, you th- there should be some. Th- I mean, yeah, the whole point of it is that there's some sort of extra thing you get for that. Mm-hmm. But if you're scissors versus rock, I think that that should make it harder for you to deal damage. But um, being put in that situation feels bad in a way that I think can make the game not as fun. Mm-hmm. So like disadvantage feels bad, but it's not, it's not awful. It's kind of like <laughs> d- disadvantage feels like, like being at a disadvantage. I don't know. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't feel like you are being being punished or anything like that most of the time it's usually like you you know it is it it feels like i'm in a tough situation but i'm gonna fight through it right like i still have a chance yeah Yeah, yeah, like i'm gonna take this chance because it's all i've got let's let's go for it that's what disadvantage does usually feel like right it feels imbalanced to me Mm -hmm. to have like the positive thing be the averages And then the negative thing be about hitting the creature in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it has to be about the damage. But I don't want to do the opposite of that. Like you can't roll above average. That feels terrible. Yeah, that's pretty awful. Like that would feel so terrible. Yeah. Um, uh, But something I did think of is you roll 
this would also feel bad, but not as bad. You roll as normal, but you have to roll one dice level below what you normally would. So if you normally would be rolling D12s, you're going to roll D10s for that. Mm -hmm. Normally D10s, those are D8s. Normally D8s, those are D6s, right? And if you would normally roll a D4, you flip a coin. Heads is two and tails is one. <laughs> Wait, I got it. Okay. You have to re-roll your highest and lowest dice. Your highest and lowest dice? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, until you are rolling, re-rolling like half of them if there are a lot. I don't, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. This is a little complicated. Mm-hmm. But basically... Um, I think that that would work out to where it would bring the, it brings the damage closer to average. Okay. So you can't do too well. Um, but the, the, the part that makes it, I think kind of balance it a little bit is that you might have to roll. Like if you have seven dice that you rolled for your attack, You'd mm -hmm. probably roll three, like re-roll three of them, because it's half rounded down. And then you'd have to roll two of your highest and one of your lowest. Again, okay. something like that. I, I don't dislike... That's way too complicated. I was going to say, I don't dislike It's super idea, complicated, but, but the, I think the idea is like... Not, not that you um, have a limit to your damage, but that like... The, the the weak part of the damage affects the strong part of the damage in a way. <laughs> uh, like So um, to give you an idea of the flavor of this, uh -huh. it's different types of magic work differently against other different types of magic. That's that's kind of what I'm going for here. Right. You you might have picked that up. Yeah. But, um, and, and so let me let me try to think of the types of magic. So. My character is a druid, mm -hmm. so there must be some kind of nature magic. Okay. And then I'm guessing that there's a wizard, so there's like artificial magic. And I'm mm -hmm. guessing there's a cleric, which would do like divine magic. Am I close? Uh, you are so close that you nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly, okay. what, yeah, that's yeah. exa <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a little bit more specific, but that's the actual, yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. Like mm -hmm. arcane magic that is like humans like cultivate themselves right and then there's like divine magic that come from the gods and then there's nature magic which comes from like nature itself which is different than the gods mm -hmm. it, I, like i would almost say that the gods if, if any of this matters the gods exist outside of nature magic that's what makes them a god yes and and but, but it's weird some, some sort of deal like that D, D lore technically has like gods of nature mm -hmm. but i it's not this really, is a homebrew yeah we can is, throw out any of that garbage that those people yeah, this, uh, those people just put together like one night on a sunday uh, yeah. afternoon yeah yeah like this is real stuff that yeah. takes actual time effort <laughs> that i thought of one day and was like maybe i could try it um yeah uh, yeah, so, so like, uh, yeah, so, again, though, like, scissors versus rock. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe you're right. You're better at logic than I am. So maybe you're right that that would average it out and make it weaker over time. Mm -hmm. But I but I just feel like I need something that, that I, like, it's okay that it feels bad, but I don't want it to feel that bad. Or, or that, like, disincentivize, it, like, really disincentivizes you to use it. Like, like using that type of magic against that type of I got creature. It. I yeah. got it. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. there has to be a choice involved. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to like choose how, like what, how much you're gambling. Okay. So, so okay. Yeah. maybe like best, maybe best case scenario is a little above average or something for for the expected uh, outcome. But I'm I'm having trouble. I'm still kind of on that same idea, but like you have to choose how many dice you're gonna re-roll, or something like that. Um, 
Okay. So like you, you do yeah. the damage roll and maybe or maybe it's like both people. Like the DM if you're fighting a monster, the DM um chooses a number of dice to re-roll. Wait. And you can re-roll up to that many as well if you want. Wait. Or something like that. Um I don't know I don't know if I'm following what you're saying, but uh-huh. what you're saying brought something to my attention that yeah. I really like. Okay. Okay. It's similar to what you're saying, but it's a lot this is simpler. This is much simpler. That's good. Um so they roll their dice like normal. Uh-huh. Totally normal damage. Yep. Then you take half half the number of dice that they roll and the dm rolls that that dice and then they resist that much of the damage there you go so then then it's not that they i don't know that feels different Mm -hmm. that feels like ah crap they resisted it rather than ah heck uh, oh crap i don't get to roll as much that what i want to avoid is i don't want i don't want the players to like have to like roll fewer dice. In fact, my hope is that they'll get to roll more dice. <laughs> well, so what, but, what if it's this? Okay. Yeah. What, what if, like, what, what if you can just add dice to your, your, your attack? Mm-hmm. Um, but for each one that you add, they get to add one that they resist with. How does that work out mathematically? I like flavor wise before thinking about the the numbers and how it actually would work out kind of feels cool. Like, all right, well, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for 10 of these. And then so the bad guy's like, all right, well, I got six to resist you or whatever. Um, so it feels like you're, you know, wagering directly against them. Um, which is kind of what it feels like when, you know, you're, you're attacking Oh, well, I guess that's not true. That's more like when you're attacking somebody at a physical disadvantage. Yeah. Like if you're if you're lashing out from a position of disadvantage mm-hmm. against somebody and you're like, I, I hope this attack lands or else they got me. It kind of feels like that, um, which I don't know is necessarily how it should feel with magical resistance and stuff. The The way that I'm thinking about it, it's more like how... Like if you if you have a lighter and a piece of paper mm-hmm. and you hold the lighter against the piece of paper, it's going to burn like the paper is not going like the paper could, I guess, flap and try to put the fire out. But it's but but it should feel kind of like that, like mm-hmm. trying to put the fire out with the piece of paper. Isn't pr- is probably not going to work out in your favor. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really want it to feel that way. Like, like, um, like they, they can totally do it if they want, like you can try, but, uh, but you know that it's not going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. That that's what I want to go for. So I think that what you're suggesting is just a little bit too fair. (laughs) If I'm being honest, uh, (laughs) just a little bit too fair. Um, I want it to be unfair. Because I'm hoping that it'll balance out by being... And you know what? I don't even want it to balance out. I still want it to be in the play, player's favor at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Because what I'm what I'm proposing here is that this is... It's all about the damage that they do to creatures. Mm-hmm. There are no creatures that are going to have any sort of extra rules against them. Okay. Um, like, the damage that the creatures do to them will always be the same as the D&D rules are. Mm-hmm. I just want to make it more interesting and and give them some more strategy to play with. Like, like I want to give them, like, you know, make them feel... It's actually really not strategy, but it kind of feels like strategy. Be, be, you don't have to think about it really at all, but it does feel like strategy mm-hmm. to, to, to kind of... And, it, and there might be like a little bit of extra level of intrigue where maybe you don't even know which one will be effective against the creature right away, you know? Yeah. So anyway, um, that's all just to say that I, I, I think that for play testing, 
I think I'm going to stick with one is just going to be normal D&D advantage and disadvantage. Mm -hmm. One is going to be uh, when you when you are on the advantageous side, uh, you treat anything less than average as average. And when you're on the disadvantage side, you roll your dice as normal, but the DM rolls half of your dice in resistance to it. Um which could also suck. That could completely negate the damage still, mm -hmm. like technically, if you roll what poorly. What if it could reverse it? Like what if they roll so much higher than you, right? You know Do you what? take damage? B because it's not as likely to happen, I'm going to say, yeah, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Like you're trying to use this damage and they're so resistant to it that it kind of like reflects it back at you. Because yeah. it's, it's never going to be very much. Like... I don't know. Like, let's use a low a low number. If if yeah, we're, like say like, you're rolling eight d twelve. Okay, sure. And, and you and you roll a an eight. I was gonna say forty six. <laughs> okay, but then they if, if like they they're gonna roll. Do they roll the same number of dice? I forgot. No, sorry. half half. They roll half. So sorry. they're rolling four d twelve. They could roll forty eight damage. That sounds like I say I'm saying four d eight. I mean, 40, 48, eight. yes. And then you take two damage. Yeah. See, like, it's not going to be much. Yeah. But there is a possibility that it'll happen. Right. Yeah. Um, I like that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. I actually do like that a lot. I don't know if it'll actually work, but I do like it in theory. Mm -hmm. That's why we're playtesting it, though. Yeah. So the third one... Then I guess if, if they're rolling half the dice, we, we, on average, we expect that you would take zero damage and you would deal zero damage. Well, you, you would actually, on average, you'd deal a tiny bit of damage. You'd you, deal. You'd, you'd on average deal half damage, right? Because they would resist half of it on average because they're rolling. Oh, you're right. Yeah. The their, their roll would be half. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, you would on average deal half damage and it could be. A little more or less. But it feels different than resistance, even mm -hmm. though it's like mechanically not much different, I guess, now that I think about it. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's it's not much different, but it is. It is different. Definitely feels different. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about attacking something if I know it's going to roll against me, though. Exactly. Yeah. But that but that's OK, though. Like, I, I want people to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I want the players to be like, I don't really want to attack this thing if I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but don't worry. It's not like, again, my intention isn't to make it harder on the players. In fact, I think ultimately it'll be easier on the players. Yeah. I, I think um, the numbers do edge out in the player's favor in, in those instances. Right. Which is good. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want it to be too bad. Especially since, again, it's it's average. So if they're doing like 7d6, then I'll roll 3d6 because I'll, I'll do one lower, right? Right. So it, it'll work out in their favor. You know, may, maybe I'll even just do it like that. Well, I don't know. It, we'll, we'll, I'll figure it out. Like, I'll figure out exactly what would work. That's why we, that's why we play test, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. So the, the third one that I want to try is I want to do the 2d 20 average for the negative side of things, but I don't know what the positive should be in that instance. Like, like there's, I can't think of a way that has to do with like the D 20 is not the damage mm -hmm. that's different than advantage and disadvantage, right? Still positive, mm -hmm. but it has to do with the attack roll. Like I don't, I, I haven't come up with anything yet. Um, and maybe we won't right in this moment since we've been recording for nearly like an hour and 20 minutes already, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'll try to think about it. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll save that for another time. We'll we'll report or, back how it went. Yeah, we'll re we'll report back what we came up with. Maybe I'll even propose it to all the players and see if, in the moment, anybody else can think of something mm -hmm. that makes sense. But, um, because uh, I think everybody who's participating in this play test is are they're all thinkers, you know. So I think, I think they'll actually enjoy the the thought experiment there. Um. Cool. Well, that's all I got for today. I guess we uh, we should start clapping now, right? Yep. Um, yeah, the plane just landed, so.
Oh, wait, this is a podcast. We can't oh, just yeah, wait. Yeah, we can't wait. It's a, <laughs> it's a podcast. <laughs> Why are we such fools? <laughs> oh, I'm such a dweeb. I'm such a loser. Uh, I'm a nerd. I'm just a nerd, man. <sighs> and again, kind of like the last time, I can't stop it. <laughs> it's not, like it's just go. It's just gonna it's go. It's just going. Well, yeah.